Okay, so to everybody, I'd like to thank um, Saidi for sponsoring the Ilu Nishmat um, uh, husband, Dr. Miki Zeichat Tzadik Libracha. Um, it's always exceptional to dedicate um, Advar Torah to Miki, to Dr. Miki. And the reason is very simple. It's a very personal uh, reason. Um, he, as a young doctor, I've said it before, a really a humble and wonderful man. But when he was in his 20s, his early 20s, he uh, diagnosed correctly an illness or a situation concerning my father-in-law. And uh, he saved his life. So it's always very uh, special for me to uh, to thank you, Sadie, for uh, sponsoring this for your late husband. You are such a wonderful person, uh, so humble, so optimistic, uh, really uh, a tzaddik, a real tzaddik. And uh, his neshama should have an adiyah begad Aden. Every single year um, I start off, and I'm not going to make this no exception, that when coming to the Pasha of Shlach Lecha, so uh, if one's speaking about the Inyan of the Maragim, I mean, after all, there are other issues mentioned in the Parasha. Uh, there's certain Inyanim of Chala, there's the Inyanim of, uh, of uh, certain details of Korbanot, there's the Mitzvah Tzitzit, there's the Saga of the... Um, the Makoshesh, the person who is Machal of Shabbos. But I mean, if we're speaking already about uh, the Maraglim, then I always uh, say I'd like to just sit down, not say anything. And any issue that one's got in the papers and current events, and you want to see what uh, the solution is or what, has, uh, what does the Torah say about it, it's all over here in this parasha. So usually on this Inyan, I'd like to actually keep quiet. And I always, after this whole introduction, uh, the whole often uh, I wanted to say one thing um, about the Pasha of the Maraglim, which is a very great sword in it. So in other words, it's a very great and apt principle. Um, um, so the the issue and the problem is like this. When the, the ten spas come back and they, um, they slander Eretz Israel, one of the things that they say in the parasha, that's uh, actually they uh, when Kalev confronts them a head a head on on confrontation, and he says he argues with them. He says, um, "To we we can we can conquer Eretz Israel." So they say to him, "It's impossible." In Pasuk Lamed Aleph thirty one, it says, "Vanashim Asher Alu Imo Amru Lo Nochal Alot Elam." We cannot go and um, overcome the people in Eretz Israel. Ki chazaku mimenu. Usually, what does the word mimenu mean? Mimenu can mean plural. Ki chazaku mimenu can mean because the people are stronger than us. Ki chazaku mimenu can also mean, and so the Gemara in Masechet Sota says, it's referring to the singular. And chazaku mimenu means that Eretz Israel is even stronger than HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Even HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we managed to take us out of Egypt, so the spies were saying he cannot bring us into Eretz Israel. Well, okay, did you ever hear something more ridiculous than that? They might have been, um, uh, not might, they were wicked people, but they weren't stupid people. So how could they have said that uh, Akharish Baruch Hu could take us out with all the miracles <coughs> at his disposal from, from Eretz Israel? Uh, from Mitzrayim, <coughs> but that Hashem, excuse me, Hashem couldn't bring us into, um, he couldn't bring us into um, into Israel because the kings in, 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 in Canaan of those times, the people in those times, or Chazaku Mimonu, they're stronger than God himself. Uh, the Chavetz Chaim gives an amazing, amazing um, explanation to what this means. It's actually a metaphor. And what they were saying is like this. Okay, God took us out of Egypt. Do you know what? They had like some lingering doubt in their minds the whole time that uh, somehow to deserve Eretz Israel, they didn't feel that they were on the level that they were deserving. And that's what it means that that God himself couldn't uh, bring the Jewish people into Eretz Israel. Why? Because the Jews themselves were not deserving. After all the idolatry, 
years and years and centuries of uh, um, of idolatry in um, in Egypt of forsaking the Torah and then afterwards again um, that the the, the 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 when it comes to the not only does it stop it like partially stopped when the Jewish people left Mitzrayim but afterwards it continued because there was the whole debacle that after uh, for only 40 days after Matan Torah there was the sin of the golden calf. So the people said, the spouse said, look, we looked at Eretz Yisrael, we see the beauty of Eretz Yisrael, we see the spirituality of the Eretz Yisrael. How are we able in our state to go into Eretz Yisrael? We're not on that level that we can go into Eretz Yisrael. We're not, we've got a history of idolatry. Even after the Torah, we worship the golden calf. So how's Hashem going to, in order for us to come in, Hashem has to make miracles to us. And we're not deserving. That's what it means, ki chazaku mimenu. Because the, 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 to bring us into Israel, God has to be very strong because, because he has to find all sorts of, uh, uh, has to do all sorts of tricks and find all sorts of merits when they, they're simply not there because the Jewish people aren't deserving. Um, the Rabbi Sraim says, of course, that they were wrong. They, why were they wrong? Because leave all the cheshboiness and the psychological uh, um, feeling of inadequacy. The fact is, Hashem said, go in. So we don't know why, but the fact is, Hashem did find us deserving. Or as the Chafetz Chaim says, he forgave us after the golden calf. And he gave us a mishkan, and he gave us a second luchot. But here we have uh, a classical case which occurs throughout history. And that somehow, when it comes to uh, being in Eretz Yisrael, not only is there uh, uh, um, is there timidness, not only is there hesitation and a scaredness from a physical, sheer physical, material point of view, or because scared of people, people are scared because of the the military threat, the physical threat, the the, the threats of uh, making a, the the problems of making a living, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All these things are they're correct, but you also have the more the spiritual threat. People having a sense of inadequacy that somehow, right, we not we we we, we don't deserve Eretz Yisrael or we can't make it in Israel from a spiritual from a spiritual point of view. I mean, even a simple thing that uh, it means even it includes even that people. In Israel, even Zionistic leaders, they, they, they don't even have the confidence to put our case forward and to say that this land is ours. That is all part of saying that Eretz Yisrael is greater and stronger even from Hashem. Even Hashem can't help us in this in this Indian. And this is a recurring problem in the... Um, um, in the... Um, in the history of the Jewish people, I don't want to mention names. One of the leaders, the, uh, when I say leaders, really uh, one of the great leaders of um, Eretz Yisrael, when he was in America, um, he turned round once to Hanan Porat and he said to him um, that he had uh, he had a great difficulty in uh, in putting Israel's uh, case in, in the United Nations and in America, etc. So Hanan, Rav Hanan Porat, said to him, tell me, you've got this problem, but are you yourself convinced? And his answer was no. <laughs> so, what, so what does one want? I'll, I'm not uh, here to bash or this or that. I'm just trying to point out this wonderful shot of the Chofetz Chaim and the Gemara Masechet Sota, that part of the feeling, the loss of confidence is a loss of confidence on many levels, loss of confidence on, I'm not speaking about the physical now, I'm speaking loss of confidence and self-doubt concerning the spiritual attachment to Eretz Yisrael, either because we're not worthy because we haven't kept Torah, or that we're not even convinced of exactly what is our relationship to Eretz Yisrael, we think that we conquerors, etc., etc., and the, 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 um, the words of Kalev, now we can do it, and what Hashem says, yes, we, you, you are deserving, and this is yours. This is what is a, a constant battle, 
and a constant call by Kodesh Baruch Hu that you're wrong. Remember that Israel belongs to us. We don't have to be in any way uh, frightened or hesitant to proclaim that like Paul Shabbat Shalom to everybody.